and welcome back, Pontiac High School. All right, we're into our third lesson now on the Bill of Rights. We've looked at how and why they were added. We looked at what those protections are. But we now have to find out how those rights have been interpreted over time because it's not always as cut and dry as the Constitution would have us believe. Let's take a look. The rights of citizens, they're not always easy to interpret. It's not always easy to tell what is, for example, a cruel and unusual punishment. To me, forcing me to watch 1950s musical movies is cruel, unusual punishment. But some people actually like that garbage. So what is cruel and unusual? Well, Constitution doesn't say. So our court system has to uh, be in charge of determining this. Our constitutional rights are just broad descriptions which must be applied in individual cases by our courts. So the courts have an important role here. And leading the courts are our judges. Judges are experts who determine if your rights have been violated. In some cases, um, these basic rights, debates, discussions, they might go as high as the Supreme Court, but that actually doesn't happen very much. Most of it is settled by district courts or courts of appeal, but we might hit that Supreme Court. Now the Supreme Court cases, however, are big because when the Supreme Court decides something, that impacts the lives of all Americans. It has the force of law. So if the Supreme Court says that nobody can be forced to watch god-awful musicals, then they can. Supreme Court, take up that case, please. All right, uh, students and free speech. 1965, there was a very interesting movement here on students and free speech. Um, 1965, we had students protest the Vietnam War. And they protested the Vietnam War by wearing these black armbands to their school. That was all they did. They just wore those armbands as a symbol that they were against the Vietnam War. But to stop this protest, the school banned the armbands. They said, those armbands are not allowed. Take them off. But the kids wouldn't do it. Now, the Supreme Court ruled that the students can protest so long as that protest does not interfere with the education of their classmates. So this is key. Students have free speech, they can protest, but that protest cannot interfere with the education of their classmates. That interference part is key to any student protest. And if you wanna protest something that uh, is going on in society or in your school, you should feel free to do so, so long as it does not interfere with the education of your classmates or the rights of other individuals. All right, let's get into a really interesting case because this one has always been fascinating to me. In 1977, the American Nazi Party, yes, the American Nazi Party. We have a political party in the United States called the American Nazi Party. Same Nazis as World War II, except for they're Americans and they live in America today. Well, they apply for a permit to have a march, a Nazi march in Skokie, Illinois. This was a town with over 40,000 Jewish residents and the American Nazis wanted to go and march there. And if you're not sure of the context here, one, go back to your US history class, and two, the Nazis targeted Jews for mass extermination. About six million Jews were killed by the Nazis during World War II. This is a big provocative thing. And Skokie doesn't want it. So to prevent the Nazis from doing this, they required the Nazis to pay $350,000 for insurance against damages that might occur because of their march. Uh, the Nazis planned to protest this requirement, uh, planned to protest, but this requirement um, really got in their way. And, they wound up being refused a permit. But we have the free speech, right? Was Skokie interfering with free speech? Does the freedom of speech protect those who would deny freedom to others? Nazis certainly would not allow free speech if they were to be in charge of the country, but can they use free speech to try to get their views across to the public so that maybe they can be a, the leaders of the country? Do Americans have the right to this sort of hateful speech? Well, the court sided with the American Nazi party. The court said even Nazis have the freedom of speech. 
the Constitution protects freedom, uh, protects the freedoms of all thought and expression, not just those that we agree with. If we only protected the speech that we agreed with, pretty soon we'd find a lot of things disagreeable and we'd start to limit a lot of speech. It'd be a very slippery slope. If we start to say it's okay for, um, it's not okay for Nazis to have free speech, pretty soon we're saying, well, communists can't either. Well, anarchists can't either. Oh, uh, well, maybe Muslims, maybe they shouldn't have free speech. Oh, oh, well, let, let's take that free speech away from Jews too. Oh, radical Christians of any time. Let's just take the free speech completely away. Let's get rid of it. It's a slippery slope. Like, where do you draw that line? We decided as a society, it's better not to have a line. Let the Nazis speak. This was referred to as the marketplace of ideas. The Constitution protects both popular and unpopular ideas. If you want to express an unpopular idea, go for it. When all ideas are freely and fairly expressed, the public can judge for themselves whether or not the idea has any value. American society has thoroughly rejected the values of the Nazi party, not because we refuse to let them share those values, but expressly because we allow them to share those values. They share those values, we are repelled by them, and therefore they have no power. That is how free speech works. Now, this is a continuing challenge though. Protecting the rights of Americans is the responsibility of all Americans. And if we can't stand up and say that even the Nazis have the right to free speech, then what are we doing? We have to accept that even those whom we disagree with have rights. And if we can't do that, we're all in trouble. By respecting the rights of others, we help to ensure that our rights will also endure. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something and farewell.